we're going to be exploiting SQL injection. So it's really good to understand, you know, how this manifests and how to mitigate it. Uh, because it is one of the most devastating ones, and it is still prevalent today, although not as prevalent as it used to be. You can still sometimes very well find this in the wild. And you'll see just how, uh, if you're used to testing for a SQL injection, it's not too much different on an API. There's eventually going to come a point in time where you're going to be ready to interview for jobs. And definitely at that point, you're going to want to be armed with the top 10 questions that you need to know to ace a cybersecurity pen testing interview. So check out the description below and you'll find very detailed answers to all these top 10 interview questions and some additional resources to take it one step further. So I'm just keeping it really simple. I'm using SQLite. It's really quick to get up and running with SQLite 3. Uh, it's already included with Python. You don't even have to download anything, in fact. So what I'm doing is this is what a, just a kind of run it once type of thing. I'm just creating a database. Um, we call it, we're calling it API.db. And we're creating an accounts table. And we're going to have, I'm basically going to map it here, right? Like um, we need an ID, a name, social security number, and address. And these two are integers and these two are, you know, strings basically. So I say ID, username, SSN, address. And I can call these whatever, but if I keep it, pretty similar to what it's named um, on the uh, on the Python side of things, then it'll just be a little less confusing. So I kept them pretty similar. And uh, yeah, see, these are integers and these are text. And SQLite 3 text is basically your, your strings, if you will. And so I'm just creating the table. So you only run that once. So I commented it out, or I might have even deleted it. Oh, I commented it out. And then I populated the database. So I just created a quick script. Uh, to take in this accounts.json file here and uh, load it in. And then for every single item in there, write it to the database. That's basically what these two functions are doing, the deserialize and write record. So I just ran that and I wrote, allowed me to instantly write everything to the database pretty much instantly. And um, from there... I created a retrieve record. Now, this is the one that we're really going to be interfacing with in this video, and it will be called by our API. So, if you recall from before, we have this accounts endpoint, and uh, it's going to parse our arguments looking for a UID parameter. And uh, what it's going to do is call this find account passing in that parameter. So, we're actually going to call a function from our database, the retrieve record function, once again, passing in that UID parameter. So it calls retrieve record, and this is the parameter that we're mapping it to here, ID num. We're connecting to the database, creating our cursor, and we're going to execute a select statement. We're going to select everything from accounts where the ID is equal to this value right here, the, uh, the ID. ID num. I can't use ID in Python because that is a special name reserved for uh, an ID functionality. So I had to use a different name. So I just went with ID underscore num. And uh, it's just going to fetch all the items there and then print it out. So this is vulnerable here, by the way, this code right here. And I'll show you how to write this in a secure way. But first, we're going to look at the vulnerable case. So if I use something like Postman, right, I could pass in a UID here. And of course, if I don't pass in the right parameter, then it'll it'll flag an error. So we're doing some validation here. And uh, if we do enter the UID parameter, if it's a valid number, if it's, if it's not, then um, we just will get null. But if we do enter in the proper UID, then we get our account information, right? That was the kind of scenario we were playing out in our heads before we're saying that this API, you've got to pass it your UID, which should be uh, this identifier that only you know. And uh, another way we could do this is like a username password type thing. But just to keep things simple, we're just going to go with one parameter. We'll say like only you know your UID. And um, if you pass in your UID, then um, you can get all the information related to your account. Not the most secure way to do it because it's in the URL. It's a get request, right? So it can be maybe seen in your history or whatever if you do it over a browser. But 
uh, or even up arrowed if you do it on a command line. But just for the sake of a scenario here, let's imagine that we don't know anyone else's uh, user IDs to get their information. Well, we, we can actually use SQL map to see if we can get some SQL injection going on this uh, on this box, right? This is SQL injection on SQLite. So it really depends what version you're playing around with. So what I'm going to do here, right, is I'm going to use, um, you know, SQL map here. So what I can say is that uh, I can just grab this whole thing here and uh, the parameters that I'm going to pass, there's going to be quite a bit just to make things a little bit easier, right? Dash U and then the URL. And the more information you can feed in SQL map, the better off you're going to be. It's going to run a lot faster if you tell it. So in this case, we know the DBMS to be SQLite 3. Otherwise, we'd have to figure it out. It would, it would figure it out eventually, just take a little longer. And uh, beyond that, we can tell it the parameter that we want it to test against is exclusively just the UID parameter because we know that to be vulnerable. And we could say, I think it's, I always get these mixed up. I think it's risk five level three, but it could be the other way around. So we'll see. And then from there, let's see, is that, is that it? We could always proxy this if we wanted to through burp, right? So we could see what it's doing. So if we say proxy, should be able to do it. I think you need the equals here. We'll do proxy and tell it HTTP 127.001 and uh, port 8081, which I have set up on Burp already. So you could proxy this, and then we could see all of the payloads that it's trying and things like that. So I think everything should be good here. So let's go and run it. And uh, now we see that uh, the, the, the fact that it's pausing is a good sign. So it says it appears to be vulnerable to a time-based blind uh, inject. So we'll just choose the default here. And we see it was able to successfully exploit this parameter, which is a great sign. So once you get to this point, and let's take a look at... Um, what happened, right? If you want to really break down what the tool is doing, which I recommend, is you could just look in here. You could see um, different stuff that it's running in here. We could even intercept these so we could see each time it even tried something. Um, we could see what what was going on. But uh, these are URL encoded, right? And we could decode them as well uh, if we wanted to. But... Um, It's doing some uh, union injects, right? And uh, let's see, like if we take this line, for example, let's uh, send this to decoder and we'll just uh, URL decode it. So here's our number here. So literally just space union all select and uh, there's four parameters that it needs, right? So it's saying three of them are null, and then the last one is what it's doing because there were four items in the database, right? And then this is the comment, right? So this is all stuff that you could figure out manually. Um, but right here, it's all it's trying to do is prove the use case. It's not actually trying to do anything once it proves that it's injectable. So that's where we go next with this. We could say... And let's take a look at help. And uh, what we could do is uh, dump to dump the database table entries. Now, a good one, depending on what DBMS you're working with, could be OS shell to actually get code execution or even OS pwn. But in the case of SQLite 3, there is no uh, shell functionality. It's a pretty lightweight, limited in its capabilities type of database. So if I did, for example, if I did try to do that, it would... Um, basically tell me exactly what I said here. Like if I try to do OS shell, it'll say that SQLite is not possible. On SQLite, it's not possible to execute commands. So instead, what we could do is do dump and dump the database. So let's do it. And there you go. 
you see, we have dumped the entire database, and I did enter a, an extra entry in earlier when I was uh, creating this one just to test it out. But uh, yeah, at this point, we've got everyone's like social security numbers, addresses, IDs, everything, right? So this is a, se a successful SQL injection attack on the SQLite 3 database. Now, how do we actually prevent against this attack? How do we mitigate it? Well, it's actually quite simple. What you want to do is you want to use what are called uh, parameterized queries, okay? And what parameterized queries are is... Um, let me just shut this one down for now. Is if you ever see like these here, right? This is using parameterized queries. So all we have to do is convert that into using that basically. So if we, for a single value, we can just have a question mark in uh, parentheses. And then we could say comma ID underscore num. And then you got to give it a, uh, a comma, even if it's like just one value. And uh, we can take away this uh, formatter here. So now if we instead have it like this, it should uh, work this way as well. So let's just test it out in Postman first. So if I run this, it works normally in the regular way, right? But now let's see if we try to run SQL map. So what I could do is let me flush the session just so it doesn't try to use the thing again. And now let's try and dump the database or whatever, right? So now it's going through. Notice it didn't pause at that one area anymore. And there you go. It just says the uh, get parameter UID does not appear to be, or does not seem to be injectable, right? So yeah, we are no longer vulnerable to SQL injection in this case.